Hi, Christina. Hi, Jeff. That's Christina Evans over there. Christina's amazing. You should follow her on Twitter at The Christina Show, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. And you should also connect with her on LinkedIn because she puts out a ton of amazing good, amazing good stuff. A, a double redundancy there for me on a Tuesday. <laughs> so um, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for, for being here too and your awesomeness. Oh, my awesomeness. <laughs> That's just you saying things. Oh. Um, we've got a caller from halfway around the world, so I'm going to bring this person in. Sounds good. Waiting. Oh, and it looks like Gene South has joined us. Thanks for coming in. So while we're waiting for everything to get connected with the caller, sometimes uh, the internet is our friend and sometimes it works against us here. Um, what are we going to talk about today, Christina? Well, it looks like we're on G is for generosity. So I, I'm assuming we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, being generous. So if I'm starting a business, Christina, what does generosity have to do with me making money? Generous people, uh, people flock to generous people. You know, if you pay it forward, if you do things for others the way you would want to have things done for you, I think it goes a long way, especially in business and building relationships. You know, it's interesting. It's been written about, it's been talked about, it's been published so many times that you need to come from this place of abundance, right? That if you're just trying to get after whatever it is that you're seeking at the expense of anybody else getting it, you're going to find yourself getting a lot less of that thing, whatever that is, whether it's money or business or relationships or what are, land, whatever that is. But generosity is a cornerstone and a key fundamental component of collaboration, of mm. cooperation. And the more we work together the better we all get. And that's why I think it's um, something that is oversought. Or I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's overlooked. Um, mm -hmm. People don't realize that givers get. And it's not just about dropping a few extra bucks in the Salvation Army tins around the holidays, right, at the grocery store. It's not just about making uh, charitable contributions to your charities or running a foundation or anything like that. Generosity is about so much more. Right. No, I agree with you. And I think that generosity and having patience kind of go hand in hand, you know, with the collaboration, cooperation, uh, that's those aspects too. So. And while we're speaking about generosity here, I don't want to remit, be remiss that yesterday was Memorial Day and you so generously served our country for a few years. So thank you again for doing that. Yeah, I definitely took a moment of silence all day yesterday. Typically, <laughs> I'm a lot more active, um, but I, I decided, you know, there's a lot of people who have lost their lives fighting for our freedom. And I wanted to be generous uh, and give back by you know, having kind of a, a day of silence or a day of gratitude, so to speak, to those individuals. So in addition to what you did yesterday and what I'm sure you do on a regular basis with um, not only by yourself, but with your family, what do you do? In what ways are you generous in your business? Um, well, I think it goes back to, you know, having patience with people. Um, I think generosity also goes hand in hand with building really solid relationships and taking the time to listen uh, generously, uh, not just talk a lot. So I, I really try to take the time when I'm speaking to candidates, you know, from the recruiting aspect to listen to their story, listen to, um, you know, what they're looking for more so than just kind of shoving our company down their throat uh, and telling them what we want and what we're looking for. So I think just, you know, those kind of actions really do help. Well, and that's really interesting that you say that right away because we've gone from generosity and you've already tied in patience and you've tied in listening. And those are two things that I don't think most people, certainly not even myself, even in the last few minutes, would I have tied those two, uh, those two other concepts together with generosity. But I think the deeper that we dive into this topic or this concept, the more 
connections or relationships we're going to find uh, between some other things that, I mean, people unequivocally would equate patience and listening to certainly good sales skills, um, but understanding and listening to your customer uh, they're pretty vital parts of growing any kind of a business. So we're really not even having too much of an issue tying this concept of generosity to very tangible concepts that we already associate with growing a business. Absolutely. I think you're on the, the right track there. I think there's a lot of components intangibly that go into generosity. And that also includes paying it forward to others. You know, maybe, uh, giving someone else the opportunity to jump onto a project, being generous and sharing, uh, you know, your workspace and your lunch at work. I don't know. I'm just saying just being very generous in allowing others to shine sometimes instead of yourself, I think in a working environment can be really important. Humility. Okay. Are we keeping a list somewhere? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We'll have it in the replay, right? (laughs) That's right. So how about content? As someone who creates uh, just a tremendous amount of content, how much of that are you charging for? Zero. So you're just yeah, putting it out there because anything. it's worth putting out there. Yeah, I put it out there because uh, it's real. Uh, I think it's going to help a few people, uh, you know, I, even if it helps one person. Uh, I just try to put content out there that means something to someone, uh, whether it's one person or a lot of people doesn't have to be paid for. So if it's worth doing, it's worth press and send. Yeah. And it's something I enjoy too. I think it's easy to be generous when you, you truly care about what you do. Um, It's easier to, to really take a step back and, and want to help others uh, when you really enjoy, enjoy that, that action. Mm -hmm. And I think it just, in terms of relationships, there has to be a certain amount of relationship or a certain amount of generosity in any relationship before it actually takes off. And whether you're talking about with your colleagues or with your customers or with the people who read your content, uh, the people who pay attention to what it is you're doing, um, putting yourself out there um, is a, a just a, a big deal when it comes to that. Um, how, how do you how are, what are other ways that you express your generosity or ways that you act on your generosity? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, it's hard sometimes to want to be generous to others. You know, I know it sounds really silly. I'll be very frank and honest that sometimes it can get exhausting to always, um, think of others maybe before yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we're kind of in a society where people want, 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 and they want instant gratification and they want things to happen and good things to come their way. Uh, but I think that really taking that time to be generous um, is going to have those things, you know, allow those things to kind of flow to you. So I think just as far as generosity, I think with my family, you know, mm-hmm. that that speaks volumes. Um, just whether it's splitting time with the kids or allowing uh, my husband to do some projects around the house, some do it yourself projects um, right. and taking the kids out uh, two on one, you know? So I think just things like that, little acts of kindness can lead up to being generous. Well, it's actually being generous is actually a house rule. We have um, in my house anyway, we have three big rules in my house. One is take responsibility. Two is do interesting things. And three is be generous. And I think that generosity just makes everything better. Um, Again, it's uh, spending time with my kids, taking time away from something else to spend time with my kids. Um, You know, my wife is gone, right? She left on Saturday. She'll be back tomorrow night. She wanted to go get away, had an opportunity for a little event in California and stretched an event from one day into five days to just kind of take a breath and, and really recharge her own batteries because... She's very generous with her time to take care of the kids while I'm off doing the same thing. So um, that's that kind of works right in along the lines of what you were saying. But also just thinking of other people, trying to teach my kids that um, you need a break. Everybody needs a break. And I don't mean a rest break. I mean, we've all gotten breaks along the way. We've all gotten opportunities because we were in the right place at the right time with the right people and the right thing happened. 
right? And so if you have an opportunity, maybe even just to give provide a little break to somebody else, that kind of thing can snowball downhill. And it's just always better to think of other people in addition to yourself. Um, I, I think there are a lot of charities that you can donate to to help provide that kind of an opportunity. There are a lot of um, certainly events. Um, Habitat for Humanity have been part of Blitz Builds before. Um, I just competed. Well, I didn't really compete. Participated a week ago in a golf marathon. I played 103 holes of golf in one day to raise money for a very um, well-deserving charity that a friend of mine is a part of. And um, those are all things that kind of bring people together. <coughs> I think that you connect with other people through your charitable thoughts and your charitable deeds. And um, it just, it feels good. I don't think there's any way around it. I mean, if the most selfish reason to be generous is that it makes you feel good when you're done. That, you just hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I teach my kids to be generous both in the house and outside of the house. So, you know, we're constantly thinking of ways to to help others. And, you know, my daughter, geez, she's got the biggest heart. You know, she takes the time to to help people in class with their homework, with their assignments. If someone's having a bad day, one of her friends, she'll make them a card. You know, it's just things like that, that, you know, really brighten someone's day. Um, and I think it's wonderful that you also have a house rule, you know, around that too. So it's just important and it's, it's underrated. You know, I mean, we think about all the connections that we've made, but, you know, just between other kind of concepts, other letters of the alphabet, quite frankly, that we may be able to take this little blab podcast to um, in the coming weeks. But um, it all really kind of ties back to that central theme. Right. I mean, taking responsibility for yourself and um, generosity means also taking responsibility for other people and, and helping create something for others, which is really the reason I, I believe is, is the reason that we're all here because we're all here together. And when the better connected we can be, not only to ourselves, but to other people, um, I just think everything else is more enjoyable. And uh, I, I don't want to belabor the point. I know we're only 10 or 15 minutes into this kind of interview, but uh, generosity is one of those understated kind of um, concepts that's just ever present if you're looking for it. I agree with you. And I think also part of being truly generous is there's two aspects to that. One is being generous means not having expectations that something's going to happen in return. And it also means that it may not go as planned. You know, you may be generous to someone and they may take advantage of it. Um, and that's okay. That doesn't make you a bad person. Does it suck? Yeah, it sucks. But right. you still took the positive action in being generous. Well, one of, um, one of the people that I look up to most is a guy by the name of Seth Godin. And I know we've talked about him um, before, but uh, to him, generosity signifies art. And art is when you put something out there and acknowledge that it may not work. That's and whether that's a project or a blog or an article or a book or a painting or just this thing that my kids made for my wife while she was gone, whatever it is doing this because I wanted to give this thing. I wanted to connect with you in a way that only I can. Here you go. I hope you like it, but acknowledging that that person may not. Acknowledging that your article about how LinkedIn and Match.com are mutually exclusive, right? Yeah. That upset a lot of people. It also really resonated with a lot of people. And you don't do things for the sake of attracting connections or clickbait or just generating random discussion because no publicity is bad publicity, but you put it out there that could, because you knew it would impact somebody. And it definitely did. Although probably not all in the way that you anticipated. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, you know, and it, it's hit or miss sometimes it's still going, the debate's still going, I guess, if you want to call it a debate. And I think part of <laughs> being generous and not that it was generous putting that out there. I think that was more just not being fearful of uh, what other people think. But, you know. But that's generosity. Yeah. It def you know what? Yes, you're right. It ties together. And I think putting that out there, um, it was difficult because I, I've, I've gotten a lot of backlash. And some of the backlash is just really mean and nasty. Uh, right. But at the same token, 
it's worth going through if it brings awareness to an issue that is very much present. So I'll take all the backlash if I have to and, and absorb right. that for other people to be able to voice their concerns. That's generosity, I guess. <laughs> well, I, in, I mean, in, in all the ways that we've already talked about, right? So putting something out there because you feel a certain way and not because you expected to get anything from it, but because you knew that it was going to benefit somebody. Right. And it, it's like, um, I give away a lot of ideas. Why do I give away ideas? Because they're no good to me. If I'm thinking about a person or a client or a company and I've got a really good idea for them, um, here you go. Do something with this or don't, but do something with this if you like it. And, you know, if you want more, I can provide more ideas for you or I can do some things to help implement those ideas. That's how I run my business. But at the same time, um, for me to hold on to a, an idea, a really good one and not implement it because... Uh, well, that's my idea and I'm not being compensated for that. What good is that? That's just a good idea that's gone to waste. And there's, I mean, no good comes from that. No, I agree with that. And um, one of my connections, Calvin Simpson, wrote an article about this pretty recently um, that if you have an idea, whether it's for yourself or someone else, you have to share it. You never know what type of collaboration opportunities are going to come up. Or I may share an idea with you tomorrow and you'd be like, wow, let's partner on that. You know, so I think you have to kind of put that out there, knowing the fact that someone may take advantage of it. Um, but at the same token, you never know what good can come from it. Right. I'm going to have to look that up. Is that posted on LinkedIn? Yeah, I'll share it with you. I'll send you okay. a uh, link to it when we get done here. No, that's good because I've always, um, I've just always felt that way. And yeah. when I'm working with somebody, it, it's, there's no sense in holding that kind of thing back because it's well, not like it's the only idea I'm ever going to have. Right. And this is his book. Oh, cool. It's actually very positive. It's called uh, life through the eyes of a smile. Okay. I actually wrote a review on it uh, through LinkedIn. So okay. if you know, you want to add a, a positive book to your list, it's a good one to have. I'm always looking for positive books. Always There's never enough positivity and generosity in the world. Never. No, there can't ever be too much. No, I agree. For sure. Um, Halima, if you are hearing us, Halima, Halima, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, from Uzbekistan. Um, I have accepted you on this, but it's not letting you through. Most times that's because of a bad internet connection. Mm -hmm. Um that's been my experience anyway. So I hope we're able to do this again next time uh, that you join us. Christina and I will be on again in a couple of weeks and hopefully we will, uh, hopefully we'll be able to make this connection. But in the meantime, you can connect with either one of us on LinkedIn or you can follow us on Twitter. We can interact that way. Um, I'm not, Christina, how do you feel about Twitter? How generous uh, are you on Twitter? Eh, I cross pollinate on yes. Twitter if that that counts, um, I'm starting. I don't know. I just think, why do I need to sit there and keep updating things that I'm doing or funny things? I just try to, like I said, use it as another avenue to share content. Uh, but I don't just, you know, get on there and tweet around all day. And, you know, that's something that I've noticed, too. And I've got some friends who are on Twitter and I've got a lot more friends who aren't on Twitter. And one of the things that I've never actually figured out about Twitter, I, I understand it's a tool. I understand it's a powerful tool. But as it specifically relates to generosity, I don't feel like I contribute much to it because I have so many other things that I need to do. And I contribute a lot more actively on LinkedIn. I just I'm more comfortable with that particular network. And I know you are, too. But the idea that I get the idea that it's a powerful tool, but I also feel that if I can't contribute well to it, then it's not fair to take from it. So I do repost a lot of stuff. I will co-post some things on Twitter as I do on LinkedIn. Um, I will share some things. I always share my blogs and I share my YouTube videos on Tuesdays and, and things like that. So I don't want to turn down the avenue or deny the avenue, but um, it's much better when you can engage with it. And I've never really been good at engaging with it because I'm not one that likes to just sit around and whether it's on my phone or on my computer or wherever, I don't like to sit still. <laughs> so to sit still and interact with people in that in that way where everything is so um, in the moment, um, it's very difficult for me to do. So that's 
it, it's always been been a tough network for me to struggle. And I actually, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, it's been a social network that I struggle with. Is how I meant to say that. Um, the I saw a video. It was a short one. That's why I could see it. Uh, it was uh, Gary Vaynerchuk was talking about this um, just a week or so ago about how Twitter is not necessarily the most intuitive network to use. Um, everything's 140 characters. It's There's so much going on in your feed all at the same time. You can't possibly sort through it all, and it becomes really, really distracting. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, I've broken some things down into lists, but then as I've followed more people, um, I haven't been very good at categorizing them into the lists, so those even kind of break down. Um, it's just kind of interesting. It's a very, very powerful tool. I just don't know if I'm... Uh, really able to get the most out of it. Yeah, I think I'm right with you. I don't have time to sit there and with something that, you know, there's a, a million tweets a second, you know, I don't have time to sit there and continuously monitor it. And yeah, you can do lists and that's great. Um, but it's time consuming. I think it's too time consuming and it, it doesn't, the, the character limit doesn't allow the wordy version of myself, which is most of the time, uh, right. to be able to put what I need to put in 140 characters. I feel right. limited. Yeah, it's it's the um, the amount of editing you have. I have to do to myself anyway <laughs> to yeah. get on there. Otherwise, it's just a string of of several tweets. Um, Richard Greaves, I saw you try to pop on. I must have missed you, or you only popped on for a second, or you tapped it by mistake. Pop on if you'd like. Yeah, you know what? And uh, you think maybe we should tweet Twitter that they should be more generous with their characters. I well, mean, you know, that's that's actually an interesting uh, that's an interesting point because I don't think they should. Oh, geez, you feel like it would junk up too much. I think that 140 characters is what makes Twitter Twitter. OK, and OK. That, to stray away from that takes away from what what separates it so that's the other hat that i put on it's not about being generous with characters and although they have in the last couple of weeks if you notice your links and your um your tags of other people other other tweeters um do not count against those 140 characters so they are actually being a little bit more generous but um i don't think that they should ever get away from being just them otherwise they'll just be another social network and everything will be long form and it's just uh, that that takes away from um what makes them unique so i wouldn't do that makes sense point taken so what's the rest of your week look like oh well it's a short week which is always nice mm -hmm. um <clears throat> hopefully going to start feeling a little bit better yeah um, i've been trying to pause myself or mute myself when i cough here so that i'm not you know hacking up our blab but i'm a little off my a game so just trying to uh catch up on emails from thursday and friday sure and see what happens put out some fires it's tough to do when you're not when you're playing hurt it's tough to do yes it is i had a really tough time you know i feel like i don't really want to do anything which is not my usual self so right. that's when i know I, i'm actually pretty sick if i'm not wanting to do anything at all definitely but. Definitely. Well, be generous with yourself and give yourself a little more time. Give yourself a little more relaxation. Give yourself a little more of a breather. That's what I'm going to do. Very now, what good. do you have planned for the rest of the week? Well, let's see. My wife's out of town till tomorrow. So it's me and the kids. And I've got some work to get done around here. I've got some work to do. I've got some new clients I'm actually starting with later this week in the Chicago yeah. area. So I'll be headed down there. And um, we're. Uh, that's just, it's an exciting time. It's been really warm here. I don't I imagine it has been there in, uh, yeah. in the Philadelphia area as well. So summer is on its way. Yesterday was Memorial Day, so it's the unofficial start of summer. And uh, it's been really, really good. So I almost, actually I almost did this from outside, but the the uh, uh, the internet's a little bit less reliable out there and I didn't want yeah. it to get all jumbled up. So we did really well today, I think, with our connection. Aside from the people who tried to join us. Yeah, I know. Poor guys um, and gal. Uh, yeah, I'm in my office and you can't really see, but I do have more windows too. But yeah. There you nice go. Little, yeah. So like it. it's nice. Six floor. I can see outside and people watch and there's a helicopter landing pad like two feet away from here. So every once in a while, it the, the whole place will vibrate 
when they <laughs> land. <laughs> oh, bad. You should have you should have seen me the first time that happened. I didn't know it was coming. I was like, "Are we? Is this an earthquake? Like, what's going on?" <laughs> yeah, it was it was interesting, but now it should be a good week. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Well, feel better. We're gonna do this in a couple of weeks. Let's get together offline here and pick another date and do this, and we'll pick another letter from the alphabet. And thanks to everybody who joined us. Thanks for everybody who tried to call in and couldn't make it. Um, this blab thing will get working better soon. And yeah. uh, I like the format and we'll we'll keep doing it. Sounds good. Thanks, Christina. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jeff. All right.